Hello and welcome to Unstitches. Today I've got this uh, Singer Stylist 498 sewing machine on the bench. It's got a, a problem. So the, the customer said, uh, my machine's not feeding the material through. So, you know, it's a fairly common problem with this sort of machine. Now this video pertains to more than just the 498 Stylist here. Uh, probably most of the 400 series, the 500 series, there's many, many machines that this video will pertain to. And uh, the problem is, if we have a look here, turn the machine on, and we'll see that there's no feeding. Now, a couple of things to check on any sewing machine that's not feeding. First of all, is, is the drop feed uh, engaged, in which case the feed dogs have been lowered below the throat plate. This particular model doesn't have a drop feed, so we know that's not the problem here. The other thing to look for on uh, other machines, including this one, is, is that the stitch length is not set to zero. Uh, so, you know, obviously that would never feed anyway, so just check that. Uh, but in this case, you know, I had the feed right up to six stitches per inch, the longest stitch length on this machine here, and it's still not feeding. It doesn't have drop feed. Okay, so what could the problem be? Well, I know from experience, more than likely with a machine like this here, that it's got a broken feed gear. Now we can confirm that just quickly by unthreading the needle here, and I'll get you in for a close look here at the feed dogs. And you can see the feed dogs down here, the ones with the little teeth on it there. And if I turn the machine, you'll see that there's no movement there. And that's a dead giveaway uh, that this machine's got a broken feed gear. The other thing that can happen with these particular machines is the hook drive gear can fail as well, in which case you would notice that the hook is not driving. Uh, but you can see the hook here driving, no problem on this one. Now, normally during a service, if I was going to do the feed gears, I would do the hook drive gears as well. I just realized while I was actually editing this video that uh, it's going to be a very long video because not only am I going to be replacing the feed gears, uh, but while I'm there I'll be doing the hook timing and potentially, you know, while you're in there it's probably a good idea to replace the hook drive gears. I've got a brand new set of hook drive gears here as well. So this part will be just replacing the feed gears as you'll see. I won't go through the timing of the feed gears in this video because when you do this job and you replace the feed gears you actually upset the hook timing as well. So I thought in the second video I'll show you how to do the hook timing. It'll be a an independent video as such and in that one I'll show you how to do the hook timing and replace these gears here. So I've got a new set of bevel cut gears here that I'll replace into there. So that'll be the second video. And the, the third video will be timing the feed gears and that has to be done after the hook timing's done. So yeah, I just thought I'd uh, break it up a little bit otherwise uh, this video is going to be well over an hour long. I'll leave detailed links in the description down below. And as always, with generally with my longer videos, I'll put chapters uh, indexing down on the on the timeline there, so you can just skip to whatever part you'd like to see. Uh, so, yep, back to um, showing you what's up with this machine here. So let's just remove the plate here and the bobbin. I don't need those in there. Turn the machine off there. I'll disconnect the power. Okay, if we tip the machine onto its back, we can do a quick check to see whether it is the feed gear or not. Okay, just one screw here to take this bottom cover off. And that will expose the gears here. And you can see already in the bottom here, the real giveaway is broken pieces of gear along with a, a whole lot of lint so you know this machine's probably not been serviced uh, for a long time but that's the telltale sign there's remnants of plastic gear okay and we can see this gear here is just turning freely that shouldn't be able to be turned freely like that that should be meshing with another gear 
The other broken gear you can see is this one here. I'll turn the hand wheel, and you can see it. Well, you can see what's left of it. Just there. And that should be driving this gear. So these two gears need to be replaced. These are the two hook driving gears here. Uh, they look in reasonable condition. I won't be changing those today, but as I say, normally I would change those as a matter of course. Uh, the, the gears aren't overly expensive, so you know it's it's. And it, in fact, this gear has to be loosened off anyway. Uh, this gear here to uh, push the shaft back far enough to get this bottom gear here off. So you know the, the hook timing and the feed timing needs to be reset uh, after this anyway. So normally I would, um, while I'm there, just replace those two. Okay, so these two gears need replacing. I've got uh, brand new ones in stock here. As I say, they're not overly expensive. You know, I buy them in uh, bags like this here. You know, I do so many of these that, uh, you know, I keep plenty in stock. Okay, so next thing to do is just take this other bottom panel off here. This one off, just the one screw. Make sure you've got your machine disconnected. There's electrical components in this area here. Now we also need to remove this cover here. Just one screw here. That one. And then probably best to take this. Yeah, I think we have to take this one off here. These two screws here. Another screw here. And yeah, motor belt looking a little bit worn. It's, yeah, I'll probably replace that. It's a bit loose as well. Yeah, there's a, there's a few things that need to be done here, but uh, I won't go through those today. Now we need to get this uh, electrical block here out of the way. In fact, there's a screw. Actually, is that loose? There's a screw holding this here, and it's loose on this machine. Uh, you should be able to get to it from this end here. Just loosen that. There is a, uh, a slot in that screw there as well, so you can actually come in from the other side. So basically we've got to move this shaft here back. So this shaft running through here is the main shaft, it comes right through to the hook here. You'll see that it's been driven here by the top shaft via a belt onto a tooth pulley here. It's a tooth belt, comes through, that's timing belt, comes through, drives the hook here and should be driving this shaft here as well. That's the feed. This is the feed mechanism here. Okay, but that's that shouldn't be, you shouldn't be able to spin that, those gears should be meshing. So what's got to happen here is this shaft here, it's got to come back this way far enough to get this gear here off. Now some of these grub screws, you'll be able to see with this one here actually, if I get you in close, you can see there that there's a flat on the shaft there that this grub screw locates into. Now a number of these screws that I'll be undoing here uh, screw up onto flats. So just be aware of that. You can uh, remove the screw completely if you want to be 100% safe, but you just generally need to unscrew the screw far enough for it to clear the flat there. So today, as soon as I undo these two screws here to you know loosen this pulley here that will upset the hook timing straight away and so once we get this uh, job done the hook timing needs to be reset and then the feed timing needs to be done as well but anyway let's uh, start by getting this shaft pulled back here okay first grub screw to loosen here you can do this in different order it doesn't really matter too much uh, but yeah, I'll start here. This is uh, Imperial, three, 330 seconds Imperial Allen key. Loosen that. And as I can see there that this uh, grub screw is tightening onto a flat surface there. 
I can check that just by removing the grub screw. Uh, if you want to be 100% sure that you're not going to catch your grub screw on the edges of the flat where it rises up onto the main shaft there, you can just remove the grub screw completely. But just remember where it came from or just uh, screw it in, a, a, you know, a couple of turns should be uh, well and truly clear there. All right, so that's that's loose on the shaft there, that gear there now. Next one uh, we can undo is the the actual broken gear itself. It's going to remove the needle so that it doesn't collide with with uh, the hook now that it's all out of time there. And let's get this. So there's one grub screw here on the. Uh, this is the long gear, right? This is the. Uh, long gear here, that's this one under here, and then we've got the shorter gear here, the two mesh together like so. Now we need to get that loose on the shaft, and again that should be a 330 seconds at 332 there, that's on a flat I think, let's just have a look. That one's on a flat as well. Okay, I'll just screw that in, say one, one and a half turns. And can we get that out of the way? Sometimes the, the gears are actually bound onto the shaft. Uh, just, you know, if maybe the shaft has been damaged at some point or the, if the screw has uh, put a dimple in the shaft quite often, uh, you know, they'll bind onto the shaft, so they can be a little bit difficult to remove. But that one, I think, is going to move. Yeah. A little bit of oil uh, is always helpful. So what you can do is you can oil either side of the gear there, just on the shaft. And another handy little tip is to just remove the grub screw there, even get a bit of oil in there as well. If you're having a lot of trouble, maybe um, you know you could try penetrating oil. might might help as well. Something like uh, a WD-40 or CRC-556, which we have here. Yeah, there's probably lots of different types of penetrating oil. Uh, so that's that's moving reasonably freely there. So we can slide that. Now, if they are really tightly bound on the shaft, you can carefully tap you know with a punch you need to be very careful not to put the punch against the shaft at all and you can just gently tap the gear there uh, to, to free it up and if you've got the penetrating oil in there that should help as well uh, but just yeah you very gently tapping um, just to free it up and as I say don't mark the shaft up otherwise it'll be um, a lot harder to put back together you might have to clean the shaft up uh, to um, make the shaft, make those gears slide over the shaft better. Um, okay, we've got this little uh, collar here to undo. Now that collar and this gear, they uh, sandwich basically this uh, bearing here. Okay, and uh, that really just stops the shaft from moving sideways. So once I loosen this. and just make sure it's loose enough to clear that flat surface there. Let's bring that out. Yeah, that's good there. It's, it stops this motion here. Okay. We need to loosen uh, this one here. But we'll loosen those. Two screws there, grub screws. Three thirty second again. And should be able to push the shaft through there like that. You can see the shaft coming out the other end there. Now something's holding it back. Something, oh this gear here I think. No, need to make sure that's right out. Yep. So here we go. Now you only need to take the shaft back far enough uh, to slip that gear off. This gear here. And it's just a bit of, a little bit tight there. 
something's oh yeah. Just bring that back nearly there. You can see at the other end there's actually a hole in the uh, casing here for the shaft to go through there. Just pull that back. Right, and there you can see all the plastic teeth have come off the gear there. There's a new one. Nice and uh, fresh there to put back on. Now with the new gears, make sure that the grub screw is undone far enough so that it's not impeding the shaft there. You can actually take them right out. All right, okay, uh, so push this here onto that shaft there. Okay, we need to loosen this grub screw here. Now let's just check. Now just make sure whenever you're doing any sort of timing or anything like that just to turn the machine in operating direction. Now so operating direction would turn this gear that way, right, which would in turn turn this gear this way. And the only reason I'm looking at that is because I want to see if there, are, if there is a flat, which screw it's on. Is it on the first screw in direction of rotation? So there's quite a gap here. There's the first screw and the second screw you know, closely follows it. There is no flat surface on that second screw there. So I will just put that back into place there, loosely. And we'll come back to our first screw that one out. There is also no flat on that surface. So this gear can be positioned anywhere on this shaft in the rotational uh, direction. So that's handy to know uh, for timing because if a grub screw needs to go on a flat you know that that's where it needs to go. There's no moving it off that flat. Now the other one to look at is the this here, this is a cam here for driving the feed mechanism. Now there's two flathead screws, so that's our first screw here, and you'll notice there's a timing mark here, feed timing mark, different to your hook timing. Okay, and that will later, when we do the feed timing, will line up with this mark here. Okay, and so we'll just take a look at this one first to see if it's on a flat. Yep, that's on a flat there. So we know the screw beside the timing mark is on a flat. So we'll just make sure we put it back there when we put the machine back together. We can screw that screw in just a couple of turns will be fine. It should be enough to clear it. Uh, more than likely that one there won't be on a flat. So that's that one. Again, this collar here stops the movement of the shaft there laterally. So just loosen that, and is that going to come off? I'll just make sure that's backed off there. Put the little, put the uh, grub screw aside there. You can actually see down in the hole there where the grub screws actually dig into the softer metal on the shaft, and that can make these here difficult to remove from the shaft. You do need to be careful not to damage the shaft there. So you don't, you definitely don't want to be, I mean the temptation would be to uh, tap the shaft here with a punch, that, that's probably okay, as long as you use a softer material punch and that you don't want to be sort of burying the edge of the shaft over, damaging that shaft at all. See that, that there is nice and free on the shaft there, this here, nice and free there, it's turning independently, that's not and that's not, so it's just going to take a little bit of uh, gentle persuasion, I would say. We can probably uh, tap this here because, I mean, the gear is going to be uh, replaced. So I see no reason why we can't just get a punch and tap on that gear there to hopefully get that moving. If that doesn't move, this might. We'll see how we go. Okay, we'll get a little bit of CRC on this area here. This is just penetrating oil. Uh, WD-40 as I said before, get a little bit down in the hole. 
Get a little bit in those holes there. I will just give that a gentle tap there with my punch. Probably will end up destroying the plastic here. Oh no. Oh, so that's the uh, that's this collar coming back here. Yep. So there's the collar off. And so that wasn't too bad. Uh, the problem is going to be this. Uh, this gear here yeah that, that's starting to move there you can feel that yeah that's starting to go there uh, I'll, I'll remove this gear here as well because this shaft may need to come through this way it might be easy to get the shaft out this way we only really need to get the end of the shaft far enough uh, to you know take this gear here off so I'll just get this out of the way here just remove these I don't think these are on flats these screws here nope that one's not loosen these here you don't need to remove them completely there we go that's the other mating gear these are the hook drive gears so uh, you know they need a, a, a clean up in fact you know replacement would be the way to go oh a bit of thread caught around there around the shaft here uh, just be careful when you do take the gear off there are uh, there's a little washer here yeah, that can fall off this little washer without you even knowing it's there this little washer here just make sure you put that aside and um you know before you go tipping the machine back up and just remember to put that back on there when you're assembling the machine okay now that that's freed up this here we can bring this shaft back uh, just far enough really to get this gear off okay so just pull that shaft back through there it's a little bit tight there just give it a little bit of help there like that now we should be able to move the shaft to the left here just far enough to get this gear off the shaft there if I can just Move that. It should just pop off the end there. There we go. There we have two mangled gears. Okay, and we've got the new gear here ready to put back on. Just make sure that the grub screw is backed off far enough so that it does not impede the shaft there. Uh, if you want to be 100% safe about it, take the grub screw right out if you want to and then just make sure that the gear goes back on the same way it came off you can see that my other gear here has fallen off the shaft that's no problem we'll deal with that in a second so that just pops back on like so that and then we come through right through there and we can now put the uh, collar on there, that uh, little collar that just sits on there. And it doesn't really, you know, there's no uh, fine adjustment for this shaft here, as far as, you know, laterally goes, as long as these grub screws uh, do up in the little channel here. You see there's a little channel there. As long as the grub screws do up there, that's fine. I would say just flush with the end there is probably okay. I mean, it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit out. But if we just tighten that up there, we'll provisionally uh, tighten this here. That doesn't need to be... We, we'll be setting the timing with this later on, so let's, uh, we won't worry too much about that one there at this stage but uh, we'll just get it a little bit tighter yeah just bear in mind also when we do tighten this one uh, for the final adjustment uh, that there should be just a very minimal amount of play laterally in that shaft just a tiny little bit of end play that's fine and um, let's put this screw here back on the 
on the flat on this surface here and that's lined up on the flat surface there we'll just get that grub screw tightened you can tighten that up tighten that right up there I'll just make sure that we're sort of in the middle of that play just set it in the middle there that's good that shaft is turning nice and freely there there's another grub screw to go back in that one the second grub screw just here okay get that one tight that's good normally during a service I would completely clean all this I'd get my air compressor and give that a good blow out there in fact I'll just quickly go and do that now okay looking a bit cleaner there now I'm not going to go uh, full-on uh, you know restoration mode here just uh, really just getting it clean and uh, you know good enough to put back together and use it's not a, certainly not a restoration it's quite a good idea just to uh, get some oil onto the into the bearings there we can do the same for these bearings you can do that before or after you know uh, I oiled the shaft as I was installing it here so you know but if you forget to you can just go ahead and oil afterwards there's the the cam needs oiling here as well uh, and I would there's also this cam here just either side of that the oil will get into that just some oil onto this little follower here Oil here, this hinge point here, those bearings, and also this there, and there's another, oh, this hinge here, this one, and there's another one right down in, buried right down. And there, there's a linkage. Just drop oil down in there. Pretty hard to get on camera. But you'll see it. As you turn this, you'll see the other end of that rod there, that linkage down, right down in there. Right down in here. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that at this stage because that's the point where you know the brand new feed gears are installed and uh, the machine's ready to have the hook timing reset you know the uh, the two hook gears uh, installed the uh, originals or you can go ahead and you know put in new ones at this point and then we go ahead and set the hook timing as i said before keep an eye out for the next video we'll go through the hook timing and then the video after that will be the feed timing as i said earlier uh, so, yep, uh, thank you as always to my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your help. You're awesome. And thank you all out there on YouTube or Odyssey. Uh, thank you very much for watching and keep an eye out for more videos.